Hello, I am the Guru Virgil, the Doubtful, bringing you your weekly dose of doubt and the poorly animated Book of Mormon. This is the fifth chapter of the second book of Nephi, which is the second book of the Book of Mormon, books within books. Behold, comma, it came to pass, that I, Nephi, did cry much unto the Lord my God because of the anger of my brethren. Looking back, you might remember that Lehi died, and because Nephi couldn't just give it a week or two, he started giving his brothers crap, and now they're mad at him. But behold, their anger did increase against me, insomuch that they did seek to take away my life. Shocker, they're trying to kill you again. You know, I would really love to see some fan fiction of this from Layman and Lemuel's perspective. I mean, they're being dragged around the world by this crazy brother and father. I mean, I mean I'd love to hear their perspective. And Zoram's perspective, because I think he is an unwilling hostage at this point, who is just stuck in America, of all places. Yea, they did murmur against me, saying, Our younger brother thinks to rule over us, and we've had much trial because of him. Wherefore, I say we kill him. I say we kill him right now, that we may not be afflicted more because of his words. For behold, we will not have him to be our ruler, for it belongs to us. Who are the elder brethren to rule over this people? How many people are we talking here? Because mostly it's your grandkids and the kids of uh, the grandkids of Ishmael. So I'm curious what people this is. Now I, Nephi, I assume, do not write upon these plates all the words which they murmured against me. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, this is one point where I agree. I also agree you didn't have to tell me you didn't say all the words. Whatever, but it suffices me to say that they did seek to take away my life. Yes, you told us that. And it came to pass that the Lord did warn me, how, that I, Nephi, should depart from them and flee into the wilderness, and all those who would go with me. Okay, back to the, everything is the wilderness now, so I don't know what that means. Where are you going? Wherefore it came to pass that I, Nephi, did take my family, and also Zoram, and his family, and Sam, mine elder brother, and his family, and Jacob and jo Joseph, my younger brothers, and also my sisters. What sisters? You don't have any sisters. You don't have any... What sisters? This has never been mentioned that you have sisters, unless you're talking about your siblings' sisters. And all those would go with me were those who believed in the warnings and the revelations of God, wherefore they did hearken upon my words. Who are your sisters? Oh my God, Dad. If it's been 30 chapters and I'm just now finding out you have sisters, I'm going to go... I'm going to throw, I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's first time, literally the first time I've seen anything about his sisters. Right. I have three problems to deal with. First, who are Nephi's sisters? Who are they? Wh where did this come from? According to the first book of Nephi, Lehi and Sariah have four sons before leaving Jerusalem. Laman, Lemuel, Sam, and Nephi. No mention of any daughters. They then have two sons in the wilderness, Jacob and Joseph. Again, no daughters. Lehi calls Joseph his last born in the previous chapter, so there's no children after Joseph. So who are these daughters? Who are these sisters? As I see it, there are three possibilities. First, the sisters could be here, and somewhere in those eight years in the wilderness, Lehi and Sarai had four children total, including the boys. Or five, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm saying daughters being two, but I guess there could be more, but let's just say two. So four children in eight years. Possible, but they never mention it. They never mention it, but I, I mean, the book ignores women all the time, so I guess it's possible. I've seen apologetic writers put them here most of the time. Anytime you look up Nephi's uh, sisters or Lehi's daughters, this is where they go. Um, the second possibility is that they're here, and by last born, Lehi meant last son. Again, dismissive of women, but possible. And the last possibility is that Nephi is referring to his sister-in-laws as sisters. So if we add in all the wives, uh, we see that Nephi has six sisters-in-law, not including his own wife. But since Sam and Zoram's wives are coming along, that leaves only Laman and Lemuel's wives and the wives of the sons of Ishmael. So those could be his sisters. Oh, I mean, I guess it's possible that Joseph Smith just forgot to add these details in the story, and this is a gaping plot hole, but I digress. Uh, my second problem is that we have a massive issue of genetics. Everyone who is described as leaving along with Nephi is a descendant of either Lehi and Sariah or Ishmael and his unnamed wife, with the sole exception of Zoram. 
that means everyone in the next generation of this civilization are going to be first cousins. And genetically speaking, if you don't know the history of European monarchs, you may not know this, but that means all their children are still just cousins. You know, this <laughs> genetically they're going to be siblings or cousins. That's going to be problematic. In a few generations, you're going to have huge inbreeding problems. There's, there's no way around this unless we, they find somebody in the wilderness. And finally, I still don't know the names of the majority of these people. I'm, I'm still irritated by that immensely. So there you go. And we did take our tents and whatsoever things were possible for us and did journey into the wilderness for the space of many, many days. I don't know. And after we had journeyed for, journeyed for the space of many days, we did pitch our tents. Who? How many? How many people are going? And my people would that we should call the name of the place Nephi. <laughs> Wherefore, we did call it Nephi. Great. And all those who were there to take upon them to call themselves the people of Nephi, of course. that The fact that you're narrating this allegedly doesn't mean this is just some ego trip for you. He's the only one. He's the only one calling it Nephi. Everyone else is like, we're going to call this New Town. But he's like, oh yeah, we're going to call it Nephi. And we did observe to keep the judgments and the statutes and the commandments of the Lord in all things according to the law of Moses. Well, that's new. They're keeping the laws of Moses. And the Lord was with us, and we did prosper exceedingly, for we did sow seed. How did you, did you take seed with you? Did you stop? How did you get the seed? And we did reap in abundance, and we began to raise flocks and herds and animals of every kind. I don't know. And I, Nephi, had also brought the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass. I'm, I'm glad you went back for those. Or did you did you go back? Because that would be funny. But I'm guessing you are claiming you actually stopped while you were under threat of murder and to get the plates of brass. And also, it seems, the ball or compass. <laughs> They're just It's a compass. Which was prepared for my father by the hand of the Lord. Wow. I want to see this thing. According to that which is written. What? How was that written? And uh, whatever. It came to pass that we began to prosper exceedingly and to multiply in the land. And I, Nephi, did take the sword of Laban, ooh, and after the manner of it did make many swords. Really? You made steel swords? Lest by any means the people who are now called Lamanites, what, not Lemuelites? Lemuelites? How come Laman gets first dibs? Should come upon us and destroy us, for I knew their hatred toward me and my children and those who were called my people. How long is this? Where are we? chronologically right now. And I did teach my people to build buildings. Good for you. How do you know how to build buildings? I don't think that was in your... It wasn't in your CV, man. Where did you get construction skills? And to work all manner of wood. You don't know how to make wood except for how to make boats. And that was curious and given to you by God. Did you document it? I'm overthinking this. And of iron, and of copper, and of brass, and of steel, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious ores, which are in great abundance, even though they're not. And as far as I'm aware, the Native Americans didn't make much out of any of those things. And I, Nephi, did build a temple. And I did construct it after the manner of the Temple of Solomon? What? The Temple of Solomon is gigantic. The Temple of Solomon is gigantic. If you don't know, it's huge. And the Bible, the Old Testament, gives a really detailed account of how long and how much stuff it took to build. Anyway, save that we're not built of so many precious things. Well, I guess not, because you it's just you and a bunch of guys digging things up. For they were not to be found upon the land, wherefore it could not be built like unto Solomon's temple. Okay, but the manner of the construction was like unto the temple of Solomon, and the work, workmanship thereof was exceedingly fine. Where is this? Because that would be pretty convincing if you found a duplicate of Solomon's temple built by Native Americans before Columbus. That would be pretty, pretty much a slam dunk. There were Jews in the Americas well before Columbus. I mean, that that would impress me a lot. Is this in upstate New York? I don't know where they are. I guess I have them pictured, on one hand I have them pictured in, in California, and on the other hand I have them pictured in upstate New York, and I have no idea because it doesn't tell me anything. I mean, they walked for many days. They could have crossed the entire continent. Who knows? And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did cause my people to be industrious and to labor with their hands. And it came to pass that they would that I should be their king, of course. But I, Nephi, was desirous that they should have no king. 
Nevertheless, I did for them according to that which was in my power. Okay. And behold, the words of the Lord had been fulfilled unto my brethren, which he spake concerning them, that I should be their ruler and their teacher. So you're their king. I mean, you know, whatever. Wherefore, I had been their ruler and their teacher, according to the commandments of the Lord, until the time they sought to take away my life, which seems to have taken them about ten minutes. So you were their ruler and teacher for exactly no time, because they refused to accept you, and then they tried to kill you, and then you ran. Ah, uh, wherefore, the word of the Lord was fulfilled, which, which he spake unto me, saying that, Inasmuch as they will not hearken unto thy words, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord, and behold, they were cut off from his presence. And he, God, had caused the cursing to come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. There it is, ladies and gents. That's that's the one. I knew it was coming up some point, but there it is. Um you now it keeps going on, and thus saith the Lord God, I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people, save that they shall repent of their iniquities, and cursed shall be the seed of him that mixeth with their seed, for they shall be cursed even with the same cursing. And the Lord spake it, and it was done. Oh my goodness. Wow. And because of their cursing which is upon them, they did become an idle people, full of mischief and subtlety, and did seek in the wilderness for beasts of prey. He made them black, because they had become like unto flint, and they used to be white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing. What the... Who? That's... Wow. I don't even know where I ended. I'm... I... I was... That's amazing. 521 through 520... I don't know, 4 or 5 or something. That's amazing. I am... Wow. I, I, I know I've read this before at some point, but just getting to it at this point, just just all the build-up to this is, is unbelievable. Um, yeah, so there you go. Skin of blackness. And they're loathsome. Uh, do not mix seed. That's bad. None of that. None of this misogynation. That's horrible. This is the most horrible thing I've read in this book so far, and I'm only in the second book. I'm only in the fifth chapter of the second book. I think there's 20-some chapters. Um, yeah, so I have many choice words for this. It is really disgusting and shocking and hilariously bad. And if you ever thought you were going to make me a Mormon in any possible way, no, just no. If this is your God, no. Oh my goodness, no. I am trying to keep this PG so hard. I am... I'm just going to move on. And the Lord God, the dirty racist bastard, said unto me, I apologize for the language, not for thinking it, just saying it, they shall be a scourge unto thy seed. Yeah, because they're dirty darkies. I mean, how could they not be? To stir them up in remembrance of me. And inasmuch as they will not remember me and hearken unto my words, they shall scourge them even unto destruction. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did consecrate Jacob and Joseph, that they should be priests and teachers over this horrible, horrible nonsense. I'm sorry, over the land of my people. I misread that. And it came to pass that we lived after the manner of happiness, because we didn't have any dark people around and to ruin it for us. And 30 years had passed from the time we left Jerusalem. So there's, and there we go. We actually have a time frame. Um, 30 years from Jerusalem. So this is 570 B.C. And I, Nephi, had kept the records upon my plates, which I had made of my people, thus far. And it came to pass that the Lord God said unto me, Make other pl Oh, no, it's not this crap again. I'm not, I can't deal with the horrid racism and more plates. I've, I've been to... <laughs> oh my, I've been to houseware sections that had fewer plates than this. Make other plates, engraven many things upon them which are good to, for the profit of my people. I just want to get to the end of this now. Wherefore I, Nephi, to be obedient to the commandments of the Lord, went and made the plates, blah, 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 and I engraved them 
And if my people are pleased with the things of God, they will be pleased with mine engravings, and then not me, buddy, which are upon the plates. And if my people desire more, the particular part of the history of my people, they must search mine other plates. Sure. I'm sure those are just as awful. And sufficeth me to say that 40 years have passed away. Well, you just said it was 30 or some other 50. It was 30 years since we passed Jerusalem. And sufficeth me to say that 40 years have passed away. And we'd already had wars and contentions with our brother. I thought you were happy. Where is this coming from? You were talking about, go read, we're happy, go read other plates if you want. Oh, and now it's ten years later, and <laughs> and we had wars and contentions. What wars and contentions? What happened? What? Is that what's on the other plates? Or is that what you're just throwing in at the end here? P.S. We had wars. Good lord. Alright, that's the end of that. I've already done a summation of the only thing that matters. I, I really am just amazed. This is the worst thing I've ever, ever read in anything calling itself a holy book. So, um, yeah, I'm Virgil. This was awful. I guess if you like it, it, it doesn't mean you like black people being described as loathsome and not mixing. It means you liked my take on it, if that makes it better. I hope it does. I hope that's it. I hope we got all the racism out of the way. And we're going to move on to other goofy things. This is a real downer. This is a real downer. I'll see you next time.